Offense. The backbone of Street Fighter 6 and a skill which mastery of has never been more essential. Most players lack a truly well-rounded and solid offense, and without offense that terrifies and smothers your opponent, you'll struggle to succeed. Even if you can secure knockdowns and keep your opponent on the back foot, without the ability to open up your opponent, none of it matters. That's why this video is designed to reshape how you see offense, to describe the micro such as combo routing to the macro such as the levels of strike throw. If you find this video useful, don't forget to subscribe and like the video, it helps me out a lot. Also don't forget to check out my channel membership perks, and with that, Let's get on with the video. Let's start with laying down some groundwork with a few definitions, the first of which is Strike Throw. Strike Throw is the system by which Street Fighter 6 and many other fighting games are designed. The core principles being that Strike takes away your opponent's life, Block prevents Strike from working, and Throw prevents Block from working. Finally, to beat Throw, you Strike, and so the rock, paper, scissors of offense is created. This will be a key idea for later, and as you play, you'll need to always remember that offense is just RPS, and every rock has its paper. Next, Okizeme. Okizeme, or Oki for short, literally translates to wake up offense and is the game state in which your opponent is knocked down and invulnerable and you're able to attack them as soon as they get up. You're able to hit them with a strike or a throw and it forces your opponent on the back foot. These strikes and throws done on Oki can also be meaty, which is our next definition. Meaty, in the context of this video, is defined as a move, whether it's a strike or throw, that hits your opponent on their first vulnerable frame as they get up. A meaty will be any normal attack or any throw. It hits your opponent immediately, hence there is nothing they can do but block. Meaties are strong because they invalidate two of our RPS options and forces your opponent to block, or use an invincible reversal to hit you out of it. The final concept to cover is the 50-50. A 50-50 is a situation in which you force your opponent into guessing between only two defensive options where an incorrect guess can spell death. For a specific example, take Zangief Headbutt. After Headbutt, Geef is plus four and can threaten with either strike or throw. No defensive option that isn't simply an invincible reversal allows you to cover both options, and so you're forced to take the 50-50. While Oki is inherently a 50-50 in itself, to avoid confusion, this video will refer to 50-50s as the 50-50s we get in neutral, not from knockdowns. There are two ways to secure Oki in Street Fighter 6, the first of which is to win neutral interactions. This means you've successfully punished an opponent, or used a neutral skip to secure a knockdown, or maybe just landed a sweep against an opponent who left the jitter around. The reward for emerging successful from neutral is usually Oki, and if you'd like to deepen your understanding on how to do this, you can check out my previous video here for some advice. The second method is to win 50-50s. To win a 50-50, we need to get a 50-50. So let's start that. The magic number in Street Fighter 6 is plus 2. We've spoken about strike throw, and to threaten a 50-50 with one of these options, you need to be plus 2 and in your opponent's face. The reasoning for this is that in Street Fighter 6, every character has a 4-frame jab, and every character has a 5-frame throw. Jabs always beat throws when they land on the same frame. Because of this, being plus 2 guarantees that if you try to throw and your opponent tries to jab, your throw will always win. This means we can freely threaten with a jab or a throw to create a strike throw mix up and force our opponent to defend. In other words, a 50 50. Alright, cool. But how can we put ourselves in these plus 2 situations? There are a few different ways and they differ from character to character. Driver's jab is strong and also the most common way that characters can force a 50 50. And if your character has a far reaching cancelable move, they'll be able to utilize this tool. You should also go into training and see what normals and specials you're your character can use to give you a 50-50, as some characters have normals that leave you plus two and close to your opponent. Here are a few examples to get your head around the concept. Footnote, you can force a 50-50 by also just being plus one. However, it's not exactly real, as a jab from your opponent will beat you going for a throw. Plus one becomes the magic number once you force your opponent to stop mashing on your Oki, which you can do by keeping your Oki airtight or just repeatedly using strike. There'll be more on this later. These 50-50s are the crux of offense in Street Fighter 6. They allow you to force guesses and allow you to begin snowballing your Oki and pressure and life lead. Throws lead to OK Oki and sometimes a throw loop, and jabs can lead into varying levels of Oki. But what do we mean when we say good Oki, bad Oki, and how can we choose different Oki? Combo routing is the art of prioritizing and managing different resources to optimize your combo and maximize your winning odds. We have resources like our drive gauge and super gauge, and then things we want to play for, like Oki quality, corner carry, and damage. We'll call these input resources and output resources, where input resources are what the game gives us, and output resources are what we optimize for. We've hit our opponent, taken note of our resources, and now we get to think, what combo do we go for? What output resources do we optimize? Ken, conveniently my main, illustrates a perfect example of this. Ken 
has access to a strong fierce target combo, after which he can cancel into his run and follow up with one of three moves, Shoryuken. Ken can use his Shoryuken follow up. This nets him decent damage and decent Oki and is usually the main route I prefer. Tatsu. Ken can use his Tatsu to carry his opponent about a third of the screen. This nets him great corner carry and great Oki, although the damage is lackluster. Dragon Lash. Ken can use his Dragon Lash to side swap and then link into DP. This nets him his best damage from target combo, however the side swap isn't always applicable. These three options allow Ken to prioritize different output resources and good players will always choose the optimal combo for their ideal scenario. Having this much utility meterless is rare however, and while Ken can go into his TC from a jab, most characters aren't as privileged. Which brings us to the importance of jab strings. Jab strings are very strong for two reasons. One, they're hit confirmable. And two, they're safe. They allow us to turn even the slightest frame advantage into a potential combo. Jab strings work on any level of Oki, which is what makes them so ubiquitous, and in situations where we can't threaten with a medium or a heavy, they allow us to still make the most of our Oki. Ken is lucky and can land his target combo after a crouch jab, however a lot of characters need to use drive gauge to extend off of their jabs. The drive gauge is an input resource that allows us on offense to extend and better optimize our combos. The majority of characters can drive rush after a jab to get a bigger combo, and most characters can even choose to go into OD mood after jabs to cash out resources. This is all good on paper, but making the on-the-fly decisions in prioritizing and managing this gauge is difficult and ultimately experience is the best teacher. For now, we'll go through an example of using drive gauge, however meter management is a big part of SF6 and something beyond the scope of this video. If you would like to see me cover meter management in a future video, please let me know in the comments below. We're in a match and we have 4 bars of gauge. We use 3 to drive rush cancel and force a 50-50. We choose strike and our opponent guesses incorrectly with throw and so they get counter hit. We want better damage so we use an OD move to extend a little and sacrifice our Oki. Our combo didn't kill and now we're left with no drive gauge. Our opponent sees this and starts pressing his offense trying to push us in the corner where we risk being stunned. In a situation like this, we prioritize the wrong resources. We decided to use all our gauge to secure just a little more damage and furthermore we now have no momentum as we sacrificed our Oki too. While there's no correct answer to which combo we choose, in a situation like this you need to ask yourself if effectively burning yourself out is worth it. You need to consider, then prioritize, then optimize all of these things whenever you land a combo. All of them can affect a round and it's onto you with the help of experience to learn how you like to play and how you like to manage resources. Unfortunately, there's no one size fits all solution to this and although your decision making will improve over time, you need to always be juggling the options in your mind to be able to recognize different situations and priorities as you improve. You now know how to get Oki and how to optimize optimize your combo right to choose your Oki, but we still don't know what Oki quality even means. The quality of Oki is simply how much frame advantage you have. Having a higher frame advantage means you can threaten with stronger moves. Remember earlier when we spoke about using jabs when you're plus 2? Well, when you're plus 42, you can use a bit more than a jab. Ken's run Shoryuken gives OK Oki as it allows him to dash up and land a crouch medium punch, while his run Tatsu allows him to land a meaty overhead, a meaty low, a meaty throw, or even a plus 7 heavy. Amazing Oki. Being able to threaten with bigger buttons that are confirmable, or moves that are very damaging and plus on hit, allows you to get more damage off your Oki. Using jabs will work, but when you can use a meaty heavy into a 60% combo, the choice becomes obvious. Different knockdowns give different Oki, and knowing what Oki you get off of any given knockdown can be the difference between winning and losing. For example, if you try to dash up for your Oki but aren't plus enough, you'll simply lose to your opponent mashing. Or if you try to use a throw too early, you'll whiff and open yourself up to a punish. In training mode, you can look at how plus your most common knockdowns are and what you can do off each of them. And now that you know how to make your opponent stop mashing on your Oki by keeping it airtight, we can now cover what to actually do on both your Oki and your 50-50s. Level 1. Strike. This is the most important level of the strike throw game. If your opponent doesn't block, you will win, as simple as that. And so, you should always begin every round threatening with strike. Threatening with strike allows you to catch your opponent doing anything but blocking and forces them to respect you. They can't match, they can't throw, and if they don't respect your offense and block, they'll lose the round. With this respect, you can then move on to the next levels and be more freeform with your offense. Strong tools at this level include meaty buttons and jab strings. Level 2. Throw. 
Once you force your opponent to block and they're not being opened up anymore, you can begin a threatening level 2. Throw. While I said the magic number was plus 2 earlier, it transitions to plus 1 here. This is because at this stage, your opponent will be blocking out of fear of level 1, which means even if you're only plus 1, the fear of strike lets you get away with throw. Strong tools at this level include meaty throws and tick throws. Level 3. Shimmy. Truly the fun part. Once you've thrown your opponent enough and they refuse to take any more throws, we can step into level 3, Shimmy. Shimmies are incredibly powerful and can lead to high damage as well as swinging the momentum in your favour. Depending on your character, landing even a single Shimmy can be a game winner, so use these very sparingly. When you only need so many Shimmies to win, it's better to linger in level 2 than rush straight to level 3. Strong tools at this level include Shimmy, Delay Buttons. Level 4, Confusion. The final level, lesser level since nothing changes, but this level represents you and your opponent being aware of all of your options. You've used rock, paper and scissors, and it's less about the levels here and more about the psychology of the guessing game. After all, no one's going to use paper seven times in a row, right? In a future video, I'll talk about the mental behind the RPS, but for now, strive to get into your opponent's head, understand them and alternate your options to catch them off guard. A quick footnote here which applies to all levels. The more you make your opponent guess, the less they'll want to guess. And so blocking on your Oki to bait out a reversal becomes stronger and stronger. Strong tools at this level include everything we've covered, including reversal baits. I cannot understate how important it is to memorize these levels. Even if it's the only thing you take from this video, remember the levels and remember to alternate between them and to always start at level one. Once you incorporate this into your game, you'll slowly realize the power of controlling your opponent and you'll win games against angsty opponents without ever even leaving level one. Having an intricate knowledge of the RPS of Street Fighter 6, as well as experience through playing the game will massively improve your Oki and make it a force to reckon with. We covered a lot in this video, so I'll give a brief summary of the key points. 1. Oki's MA, Meaties, and 50-50. These three things build the backbone of offense in Street Fighter 6 and any fighting game for that matter. Understanding these will allow you to articulate your offense and understand what it is that you're actually doing. 2. Getting Oki and 50-50s. We can get Oki through either winning 50-50s or by winning neutral, and we can force 50-50s in any situation where we are plus 2. 3. To get Oki, we need a knockdown. To get a knockdown, we have to route our combos appropriately. Prioritize the correct input and output resources to min-max your odds of victory. 4. The levels of Strike Throw Now that we have Oki, we work our way through the 4 levels of Strike Throw, starting from the bottom and reaching a stage where we cycle all of our options to keep our opponent guessing. Hopefully now, the depth and intricacies of offense have been a bit better understood, and it's clear that offense can take a short while to learn, but a lifetime to master. Watching this may actually have the inverse effect of making defense seem daunting, but it's important to remember, this game is just RP. Yes, and everything has a counter. If you're still worried, don't be, as my next video will be all about defense, so if there's anything you'd like to see there, please leave a comment down below. For now though, I'm going to be heading to a versus fighting in Birmingham, so hopefully I'll catch some of you there. If you're still here, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Peace.